Hello and welcome to the lecture Late Design and Manufacturing. My name is Philipp Hasebach and I'm Associate Professor at DTU Wind and Energy Systems. I'm specialized in the design and the final element calculations of wind turbine rotor blades and we also look into the manufacturing process of wind turbine rotor blades. In this lecture, you should be able to explain the design procedure of wind turbine blade structures as well as you should be able to describe the iterative uh, design process and moreover you should be able to explain the manufacturing process from the mold design to the uh, mold uh, that is needed for the manufacturing process as well as you should be able to uh, describe the vacuum infusion um, process and the curing procedure afterwards and finally you should be able to explain the necessary steps from the assembly of the wind turbine blade to the final wind turbine blade as a product. So let's start with the design of a wind turbine. Usually the design starts with defining design parameters as for example the rotor diameter or the hub height and as well uh, leads uh, finally to the rated power. For calculating the rated power we have to know some um, variables and constants that we that go into the equation as for example the air density, then we have uh, our rotor area as a result of our uh, diameter and of course uh, we have to know how efficient it is to extract the power from the wind so we have a power coefficient uh, that goes into our equation there as well. As you can see we have our wind speed and the wind speed is an external condition so that means we have to know more about our external conditions to finally come up with a good structural design and also knowing the loads that our structural design will experience during expected operation lifetime of round about 25 years. So when we talk about the external conditions uh, we talk about the uh, site specific uh, inputs that we need uh, to design our wind turbine. So usually we talk about wind turbine classes based on the specific uh, wind conditions for the environment the wind turbine should operate in. Usually we talk about the reference wind speed that occur on the site, uh, but of course we also have to know the highest wind speed that we can expect in these areas. When we then uh, know the reference wind speed, we can subdivide our or characterize our wind turbine into uh, specific IC classes uh, according to the wind and turbulences. So uh, for the low wind speed, we have wind turbine class three uh, and go for higher wind um, speeds to the wind classes one as well as there is also a specific uh, wind class uh, where you can design your design according to uh, some very specific wind conditions that are not pre-described in one of these wind turbine classes. So we have our IEC classes and then we have uh, IEC turbulence classes. When we now know our external conditions um, we can start with the structural design and the structural design Usually we start with the aerodynamic um, design, meaning that we shape our airfalls where we want to create airfalls that have a really good uh, lift by minimizing uh, the drag. But of course um, we can't not only create very slim and thin airfalls um, because our airfalls also have to have enough space to have the structural design so that uh, our structural design can carry uh, the loads that occur when the wind is acting on the wind turbine blades. That means we also need a little bit thicker airfalls towards the root, whereas we can have very thin and um, very aerodynamic airfalls more towards the blade tip. So you can see the structural design consists at least of the aerodynamic and the structural design, meaning the airfall and the inner of the airfall. But of course, um, to verify our design methodology, we have to simulate and to run prototype testing of our wind turbines. And that we can't do without knowing the loads. Because we have to know the loads that are, um, our structural design has to withstand with, as well as uh, the aerodynamic uh, design has to be uh, specifically made for. That means, uh, of course, uh, first um, we have uh, gravitational loads and inertial loads but we also have our aerodynamics loads um, and actuation uh, loads, meaning the loads coming from the controller unit uh, of our wind turbine 
how uh, the controller is setting up the wind turbine and uh, controlling the operation of our wind turbine. As, a, as well as uh, other loads, as for example ice or hail or other specific um, climate conditions. So in order to get these loads, usually we run aeroelastic um, simulations, meaning that we look into the aeroelastic design of our wind turbine, um, where we simplify our air faults and the structural design and put it into a simulation of our entire wind turbine and running then aeroelastic, meaning um, dynamic simulations where we include structural and aerodynamics of the entire wind turbine. So the entire blade design is a highly iterative um, design process between aerodynamic design, structural design and aeroelastic design. During the aerodynamic design we try to align our air faults along the uh, wind turbine span in the best way so that we always have the perfect angle of attack according to the wind speed uh, for this uh, position but also to have very aerodynamic air faults uh, towards the tip and getting more into uh, air faults that can also withstand these high uh, moments that occur around the structural uh, root of the wind turbine blade. Then during the uh, structural design of the blade we try to uh, tailor our layup in the best possible way that we can create a lightweight structure that can withstand um, the high loads meaning that we try to redistribute uh, the different material and the layers in the best possible way uh, to create a really tailored design there. And then, um, of course, uh, during the uh, aeroelastic design studies, we not only look into the uh, loads that we can extract from our aeroelastic uh, design simulations, but we also try to design our controller and uh, to optimize the way the actuators are working so that we can uh, create a highly efficient working and also very stable wind turbine. When the iterative design is getting to the final phase of our wind turbine blade, of course we have to verify the design methodology um, by simulations before uh, prototype building and testing can be conducted. For that, um, as soon as we approach the final phase of our um, design process, we need uh, very sophisticated and um, high fidelity finite element simulations where we look with nonlinear simulations for example into the um, strain and stresses that occur during the blade during operational phase where we aim to design our blade to reach a specific strain or stress level and not to exceed this for the loads including the partial uh, safety factors that we have to take into in consideration there. But we also look of course into the tip deflection um, that is required so that we stay uh, far away from our tower. That means uh, that we have enough tower clearance there that the blade is not hitting uh, the tower during operation. And uh, we look into the strength and buckling uh, with uh, specific failure criteria and uh, try to stay within the allowable ranges. Those, as soon as the design methodology has been uh, validated numerically, we can start uh, the mold design process uh, so that it allows us afterwards to do the manufacturing of the prototype and subsequently can do the testing. For looking into the mold design we have to look into uh, the manufacturing steps uh, meaning that we have to uh, first create a mold where we can put all the dry and flexible fabrics uh, as well as root inserts or foam or balsa wood into our mold because they are very flexible in the beginning, they are like a textile and first when they are infused with resin and everything cures, then we create a stiff and hard material. That means uh, during our mold design we have to uh, take all these uh, process steps into uh, consideration and not only create a mold uh, that is exactly the shape of our wind turbine blade, but also take um, all the steps into consideration, meaning that we need a little bit of space around the mold or uh, sometimes uh, space where the resin can flow to and a heating system and so on in our mold. As soon as our mold design has been completed, the mold manufacturing can start. That means the first step is that we look into uh, shaping um, our mold and for that usually uh, 
uh, foam plugs are CNC machined, um, getting the blade uh, shape. Subsequently, uh, a technical geocode code is applied to our um, surface here, and then uh, fabrics are ruled out, uh, building up as a mold itself. And then, depending on uh, what kind of mold you want to create, you can have uh, heating systems included there or install specific sensors before you then create your mold and put it into a, a rack. After the mold manufacturing process, um, it's ready for inspection of the final molds. So we can begin starting uh, scanning the molds or measure the molds geometry to really ensure that the final molds are the same as the intended design of the molds so that we can specify geometric deviations and possible do adjustments or repairs on the mold so that we in the end have a mold that is within the specified tolerances. As soon as the mold has been approved, the layup and the packing of the blade components can start. So here we have to consider a lot of different things uh, as for example the ply and uh, stacking sequences of the different layers. Um, we have to look into uh, different cutting angles so that we uh, get that correct, but also uh, chambering of the core material, for example, or considering um, how to place and where to place exactly our root inserts. So as soon as we have carefully considered all our uh, packing of the blade mold, it's more or less ready for the next step. As soon as we have uh, finished the packing of our mold, we can start with the vacuum infusion process. Meaning we have placed our preform stack in here, consisting of the fabrics, the foam or balsa wood, as well as the root inserts. <clears throat> we apply then a resin distribution media, which is usually a media with a very high permeability placed on top, which allows the, to evacuate uh, the air from our composite and also to allow uh, the resin to flow very smoothly through this distribution media, getting into, uh, inside our laminate. After that, we apply sealing tape and a vacuum bag, sealing uh, the entire fabrics and start the vacuum pump, extracting the air, uh, evacuating the entire stack for air and also compress it by applying vacuum to it. As soon as the uh, vacuum has been stabilized and we have ensured that there are no leakage, um, we can start opening the valve and the resin will be drawn in um, and uh, get through our resin distribution media and then uh, will be distributed in an idle case everywhere um, in our laminate until it reaches uh, the outlet again close to the vacuum pump um, and then the infusion process is in an idle case uh, completed and we can stop uh, for the pump as well as the resin inflow. In order to ensure a good vacuum um, infusion process, usually a lot of trials um, are run on a flat or curved uh, panels as well as uh, simulations of the resin distribution are performed to ensure uh, that the resin from the inlet towards the outlet is running very smoothly, that we can avoid air traps and that we reach um, with the resin more or less simultaneously uh, the outlets and those can reduce our cycle time um, for the infusion process significantly. After infusing the blade successfully, the resin has to cure. This is usually done by applying a heat of around about 40 degrees uh, for the initial phase where the resin starts to cure and also the chemical process uh, creates exothermic heat. After the transition from the liquid phase towards the solid phase and where the exothermic uh, process has also decreased again, um, we start ramping up the temperature to around about 80 to 85 degrees and keep it there for several hours to ensure that our composite is fully cured and so reaches its full uh, strength, strength and potential. If the blade has not been manufactured as a one-shot blade, all components of the blade have to be assembled and adhesively glued together. As you can see here, technicians apply the adhesive bond paste to the shear webs and the uh, leading and trailing edges of the wind turbine blade before the blade 
is then assembled, meaning that the upper shell uh, is uh, put on towards the lower shell and everything is um, positioned and under pressure and of course under a curing process then adhesively bonded together. When the curing process is completed, the blade can be demolded and will be inspected. Sometimes repairs to the blade structure are needed. Finally, the blade will be trimmed, meaning that the leading and ed uh, trailing edge uh, remaining material will be trimmed and removed. So we reach to our final product, our wind turbine blade. Before the prototype will perform a bunch of tests to verify its design, a geometry check by uh, scanning with a 3D uh, camera systems will be performed to ensure that our manufactured blade is according to the design specifications. So after this lecture, you should have learned about the design procedure of the wind turbine blade structures. You should have a knowledge of the iterative uh, design process. You should be able to uh, uh, explain the manufacturing process from the design towards the mold, as well as um, you should have a knowledge now of the vacuum infusion process and you should be able to explain the necessary uh, steps from the assembly to the final um, wind turbine blade as our product. Thank you for watching this lecture.